can blame yourself mm. in terms of the body, body self, it's still trying to chase it out of your mind, like, like the priest would do with the goat, you know, get it out of your mind and get it onto something specific. Aha! We've got the culprit. <laughs> it's right there. And that's what the dynamic of projection is. So, is what I was sharing the other day, if you still believe in something, but you don't want to admit, you don't want to fess up to your belief in it, then you can point the finger and say, I have a lazy roommate. Uh, not seeing that, that you believe in laziness, and, and that your mind is holding on to the concept of laziness, but you're projecting it out and saying, no, no, I'm not lazy. I am uh, trustworthy, and I am hardworking, and da 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 but my roommate is lazy. It's, it's a sneaky trick to think that the roommate is lazy, because you still are holding to, to the belief. When we're looking at projection in this scenario, is it like you usually you're looking at a specific thing you might be projecting? Um, yeah, I would. The projection. Um, so, are we usually um, like a specific thing that might not have come out in the story? Like, for instance, we might have writ written when I think about my interim mate. You know, I feel really angry or whatever, and I think they're to blame, and I'm afraid that I'm going to have to clean up with them. Mm -hmm. But it's a specific concept is I'm projecting the sort of laziness. Mightn't come, do I need to kind of get back to that specific concept that I'm actually projecting? Uh, yeah, you might say that that's what this will do, this instrument for peace, because it's whether you're having thoughts about somebody specifically, feeling, Maybe you're not even aware. You know, sometimes you meet somebody and you go, I don't like them. I don't even know why I don't like them, but there's yeah. something about that person that, yeah. that I don't like. Uh, and then this kind of thing will help help you kind of get more in touch with what's going on. So we're still tracing it back a, a bit, in a way, like the actual projection might have come out in yeah. the story. Exactly. Like with um, Margaret the other day, you know, she saw stuff um, this morning, the insight came into the yeah. Um, hearing what it was about more. Yeah. yeah, that's how it works. You can always say that, for example, in terms of D, you know, the belief, my belief in lack, taking the form of an image of self, other, the world, the ego itself, this ego identity, is the belief in lack. Because God is perfect fullness. There's no lack in God, and there's no lack in love. But the ego is lacking. So to identify with the ego, then means that you will, instead of going, I believe in this, it's like that gets pushed out of awareness, and then you see a world that reflects all this lack. There's not enough water to go around, there's not enough love to go around, there's not enough food to go around, there's not enough money to go around. You know, you could see that it plays out in terms of the world, this belief in lack is buried, and then it's projected out, so it seems like now you're at the mercy of a world that's lacking. Not enough resources, there's not enough, uh, you know, it seems like it's just a world of scarcity and lack. So that's kind of more in the big picture, but also you could see it more in terms of specifics, like, why did I have to have a roommate that's lazy and dirty and, you know, whatever, uh, or I don't like this about my spouse, or I don't like this about my my children, you know, something like that. It can play out also in terms of specifics as well. And we've brought in that idea that it's, if the cause of the upset was outside and the resolution were outside, then I would be powerless to change my state of mind. But we're saying, no, this is all just projection, and and you can get to a point where you can see the, the folly, or the humor, or the error of projection. That you really don't have the power to do this. So that's where we're heading with all of this. You know, it's a trick. But, you don't have to give your mind to the trick. And then the trick's over. When you go, hmm, I'm not going to fall for this big mind trick anymore. I'm going to going to let go of it. So. Number six is 
thinking A, feeling B, and blaming C or and or fearing C results from my belief in lack, taking the form of an image of self out of the world. So we're making a connection now between A, B, and C, and D. Before, in number two, it was that A, B, and C prove that I'm right about D. And now in six, we're saying that A, B, and C come from believing in D. That everything I'm thinking and feeling and, and fearing or, or blaming or whatever, all of that is a direct result of, of D. D is the cause. You know, we were talking earlier about the hot sauce. You could start off and, and when I think about how hot the temperature is, I feel hot and sticky because I think that uh, the weather is to blame and I'll be hot and sticky in the future. <laughs> or whatever, you know, you could see, even if we were talking about our simple example last night at the table about heat and the weather, uh, and what this is doing is number six is saying, no, all those thoughts about it being hot and, and about the environment and about how this could even continue and whatever, all are coming from D, from this self-concept that I'm holding. It's not coming from the sun. It's not coming from the humidity in the air. It's not coming from, uh, you know, having too many clothes on, or not enough ventilation in the room, or not enough breeze, or you know, you could just go and see how even something as simple as thinking it's too hot, you know, can would be traced back to to D. That there's I'm lacking, I, I believe I'm a self that's lacking. And that's a big turnaround. Because usually the ego just wants to go and commiserate and find somebody else and walks over and says, isn't it terrible? It's so hot. And then the person says, yeah, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> and they're reinforcing the belief that, by golly, it's too much sun or not enough ventilation or too, too humid or whatever. You know, that's how sneaky this world is. You, know, you see the draw forth witnesses that will agree with you when you're in this backward way of thinking and looking at things. Okay, we're ready to go on to number seven. So you'll turn the turn the sheet over. This kind of works. <laughs> I don't like doing this. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's the next sheet. <laughs> when I think about doing the instrument for peace, I feel this is hard work. <laughs> you just it's like the same process just gets used over and over and over. And in one sense it is, it can seem that way just because the way that we've been thinking and perceiving since we were babies has been based on this reversed, backwards way of, of looking at everything. And now it's kind of like you've been uh, swimming in one direction uh, your whole life and now suddenly you've got to turn around in the pool and do a full about face and just kind of go in the other direction. And that energy that it seems to take to turn your mind around, you know, to really turn it around. Or maybe you've been going in a boat and now you've got to turn the boat around. Uh, that, it seems to take a little bit of effort, especially at the beginning. But then the more you do it, just like it's hard to ride a bike sometimes at the very beginning, but the more you do it, it's like, okay, yeah. I can handle this. <laughs> And that's the way it is. Shaking up the comfort zone, aren't you? It sure is. It does <laughs> shake up the comfort zone. Because you've, you've had a, a whole way of proceeding. Right? Now it's like, here we go, we're turning the whole, whole thing around. Yeah, all the brakes. All the brakes on. Now, this, now Seven's going to explain it a little bit better. I am only upset at someone or something when they or it mirror back to my mind a belief which I have denied from awareness. So this is the gift of relationships and the gift of the environment and the gift of everything in the world. It's just mirroring back 
a belief that I have denied from awareness. I have pushed it into my subconscious mind, and I've just assumed it to be it's true. You know, it's people don't meet at a party, and you know, usually when they meet, it's like, what's your name? Uh, where do you work? You know, do you have any family? Uh, what do you do, for, you know, for a living? And this and this. It's like all that stuff. You don't get together and say, do you believe time is real? I mean, you just, it's, it's just not the first question at the party. You believe in linear time. Okay. You, believe, you believe in good and evil? Uh, I think so. Well, that's dualistic. Uh, you, know, you know, you just don't get to that point. Those are questions you usually don't ever get asked at the party. Unless you go to like a Krishnamurti party or something. <laughs> But you know that God didn't create the world. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Do you believe God created the world? If, if that was your lead question, it could be some big yeah. waves. <laughs> you, you know those big bouncers that bounced out of the club, yeah. out of the nightclub. <laughs> Shaking things up with those questions. So this number seven, am I only upset at someone or something? I mean, what if it's actually myself, it's my own, if you're blaming yourself yeah. or something? So I'm only upset at myself. Yeah, and, and even that would my mind. yeah, that would still be that would still be a belief which I have denied from awareness. In other words, if you were upset at yourself, and let's say you're projecting it onto the personality self, and you're really angry, like how could I have done something so stupid? Or circumstantial. Or, or circumstantial. How could I got myself into this circumstance right. or whatever? Okay, how and you're projecting that? it onto the body, and you're blaming the small self. It still means that that this projection, that even this self is still mirroring back to me, to my mind, a belief which I have denied from awareness. So even in that case, it's still, there's still some unconscious belief that it's doing the mirroring for. And that's why we do have to get into our minds, we have to get at what's going on in that subconscious, because other than that, it's just the blame just continues. Like, I did it again. I can't believe I, I got in the, the same, same situation, yeah. same trap, I fell in the same like in Groundhog Day, the movie with Bill Murray, where he keeps stepping in the same puddle. You know, he's, he just fall, his foot falls in the puddle over and over and over until one day he, he goes like this and he starts to realize, ah, I'm not going to do that again. That's what you have to do with your mind training. You have to catch yourself. So... It's a nice short connecting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Like an electrical current. Shorting it and just catching yourself doing it. There I go again. Yeah. Very important to notice yeah. instead of to, it's like to react. It out, isn't it? Yeah. Instead of react and judge and draw conclusions like, oh, I'm just a stupid person or I'll never get this. I'm just going to always be this way, this and that. Those are all just like self talk uh, conclusions that come from, oh, I noticed that, but, but it, the reaction goes much deeper. You know, it's taking it personal. It's taking it as your identity, not just a mistake that your mind has made, but an actual identity. And that's what the ego wants you to do, is just fall right into that puddle and give up. Just wallow in the puddle. So this is like a way of saying, no, I'm not going to wallow anymore. I'm going to see what I'm doing, but I'm going to do it without blame, without guilt. When I blame or fear something in the world, it is to avoid seeing the upset and resolution as they really are, a decision in my mind, and to instead maintain an image of self, other, the world as I wish. So this is a big one because it's saying that whatever's going on here, it's really a decision in your mind that you're making and not caused by something that's happening in form. So, you know, you could use an extreme example like um, they arrested Gandhi. Years ago they arrested Gandhi in India. And they took him and they put him in prison and they decided to bring him in front of, you know, the judge and try him for sedition, which was writing uh, these ideas about freedom and overthrowing the British in a magazine. He, he wrote his ideas out of the magazine. So Gandhi, while he's on, on trial, and they got the judge there with the big wig on and everything, you know, basically the judge says, did you write these things? 
And Gandhi said, look.